Hey, good morning. Well, first thing, congratulations. You're now on the way to a beautiful hike. But before the hike, just one second, there are a few different ways, you know, to get to whether you want to go to Island Peak or uh, Everest Base Camp. But you need to understand when you go first, relax. Because things won't necessarily work your way. You know, there are a few different ways to get there. Uh, I'll just talk now about three. You could go there in a Jeep, you could go there in an airplane, and you could go there in a heli. That's how I chose to get there. So number one is basically you want to go in the heli get to Sukra or to Lukla. That's number one. From there, we'll keep on in the next videos where you go to, but just relax because things might not work the exact way you want them to work. So have a cup of coffee, chocolate, and wait for the next stop. You know, on this channel, we are a big believer in movement, and movement is something that affects all areas of your life. So I want to guide you now through two beautiful treks in the mountains of Nepal. One is Everest Base Camp and the other one is Island Peak. At the beginning they're the same one, but we'll do over here a guide day to day. We'll make it simple, we'll make it beautiful so you could have the best trek in the world. Now that we have landed, you know, I waited probably a few days to get here. The weather was pretty bad. I got here with a helicopter and now I'm here. So the first day is, you know, beautiful, really beautiful. You can walk either from Ulan and Lukla, either you walk from Lukla to Pakdin or you walk from Lukla to Namche. Both beautiful. You need to adjust to the height. So, you know, do it slowly, enjoy your time, watch the beautiful views. You can see here the beautiful river, probably also hear it up there walking soon towards the Himalaya. When you see these type of uh, stones, you always need to walk to the left of them. You know, it's our respect. Something that has to do, I think, with their religion. And that's what I was told, at least. Everything is really, really beautiful. Beautiful people, beautiful mountains. Just come. Some beautiful villages, mountains. Really beautiful. Okay, now really important rule when you see these guys, stay to the right, it's their path. Just let them to go through and stop at your spot until they pass you. Otherwise, it won't be good. Another rule when you see or hear a porter behind you, give them the right to pass. They're carrying heavy weight. They should walk before you and should be before they're more comfortable. So as you can see, I'm carrying my backpack all on me, but you really don't have to. You could, as we said before, there are porters, they'll be more than happy to help you carry you know, most of your stuff and you can just have a light backpack on your back. Now, a few important things before we continue and meet in day two. Number one, you're walking in the heights. If you don't feel good, maybe go a little bit down the height. There are pills you could take, there are garlic. There's garlic that you can eat. So listen to your body, only 500 meters a day, not more than that. Another important thing, if you're hiking alone in the mountains, like I'm doing right now, really important that if you're over 3,500 meters, don't walk alone because you have no clue how it would affect you. So even if you don't have someone with you, there are always people on the trek. Make sure that you know about where they are. That way you don't walk alone. Anyways, I'll see you tomorrow. Today I'll end my day in Pakding or Monjo. We'll see. Hey, good morning. Welcome to day number two. So hope you got some rest after day number one. Wherever you stop today, you want to get to Namche. Okay, now on the way to Namche, you'll have a place that you need to, to pay a fee as a tourism. It's, I think as of today, it's 3,000 rupee. Now, don't forget that also in Lukla, you have a place you need to pay a, to pay a fee for 2,000 rupee. So altogether, it's like 5,000 rupee. I'm telling you, it's worth it. It's beautiful. Today, you're going to have a beautiful day. You're going to climb up to Namche, take some stops on the way, enjoy the beautiful view. It's really beautiful. Just enjoy from time to time rest. Don't forget, don't try fighting with the elevation probably stronger than you. So take some good rest. Walking here can be a little bit scary, but it's for sure worth it. Look down. Look at the beautiful bridge. You would love it. When you get to this part, look, it's beautiful when you cross these bridges. Well, you're crossing at least this one. But I'm telling you, even if you're scared, it's for sure worth it. If you're really scared, just focus on the flags or on the bridge and don't look down. <laughs> Welcome to Namche. I hope you had a good walk. Uh, today, when you get here, you should probably stay here like two nights. Just that we don't get altitude sickness. 
and just enjoy, relax. Uh, maybe even, you know, before you go to sleep, climb up another like 100 meters. That way your body gets used to the altitude and just enjoy the place, it's beautiful. Good morning, welcome to day three. Hope you got some rest, some two nights in Namche. Today you have some beautiful views, you could see here the Everest. Today you'll probably walk to Tangboche, if not to Tangboche, so maybe to Pangboche. Make sure you enjoy the view, have some fun. Really, 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 really beautiful. Just one thing about that altitude sickness, you know, I wasn't feeling good yesterday. So I went up, then I went down, and I got some rest. Make sure you walk slow, and if you don't feel good, take a rest, all good. The trail is not hard. What is going to be hard for you, if it will be hard, is the altitude. So take your time, walk slow, take some stops, just enjoy the beautiful view, and have fun. Hey, welcome to day number four. Hope the climb yesterday up to Tangbuche was fine. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice climb in the altitude. And today where you're going to walk, I don't know where you stop, whether it's in Pangboche or in Tangboche or a different place, usually people walk today to Dingboche. And over there you'll, you should stay two nights to get used to the altitude. And all along the path, just look at the view and listen to your body. Good morning, I'm freezing cold over here. So today will be in your rest day in Dingboche. And what you're going to do today in order to acclimatize is you're going to climb this mountain up here. You could see already the people climbing. And you could see them right here. See all these people? They're climbing up. They're going all the way up the mountain. See them? So you're going to climb up there, as I said. Just, you know, climb slowly. Take your time. Look at the beautiful view. When you come back, if you walk down this main street, you see there's a nice coffee shop you can go enjoy there and that would be the end of your rest day and acclimatization day over here in Dingboche. the height of this mountain you're going to climb is i think 5073 or 583 and then you come down here you sleep down here in Dingboche. that would hope for your altitude acclimatization welcome to the top of the mountain hope you had a nice hike i would love to show you the rest of the view but it's so beautiful and saying beautiful is understatement so honestly, if you're curious, come climb, take it slow, step by step, and go back down to Dingboche. Welcome to day number five. Today, the walk will be from Dingboche to Lobuche. It's a nice walk. You know, walking slow, enjoying the view. Just have a good time and look at the beautiful view all around you. Like I said, I won't show you everything because I want you to see more when you come here. But just enjoy the beautiful day. Take your time. Have some hot drinks in the middle. And wear a hat. I'm just taking a break from my hat for a few minutes, but for sure wear a hat. Sunglasses also important because you're going to see some snow and just enjoy your day. Welcome to Loboche. Beautiful place. Beautiful view. You just want to make sure that you reserve a spot before. I personally didn't and most of the places over here are full. Since in season, a lot of people come. It's a pretty small space, so either you, you know, uh, book a spot on booking.com or just wake up early from Dingboche and get here early enough in order to get a spot to, spe to sleep. Hey, welcome to day six from Lobuche to Gorokshep. You see behind me, Gorokshep. Most people today will walk from Lobuche and then get to Gorakshep from Gorakshep to base camp and then after that sleep in Gorakshep and in the morning day seven we'll go up to Kalapatar and that's the mountain right here behind me not the one with the snow the one right down there I think it's like 5,600 uh, something meters so in feet that would be around maybe 15,000 make the calculation by yourself but personally I'm probably trying to go there up to Kalapatar right now then base camp, then back to Lobuche, but don't worry, towards the end, uh, I'll make for you a video, uh, hard to breathe, I'll make for you a video that explains all the days, day to day, what are your options, uh, I just don't have too much uh, battery with me, and a phone, and I want to have the phone for, for the map for emergency, so we'll be in touch later for some more details, how you can plan the best trip in the world. Welcome to the top of Kalakbata, this place is amazing, it's 5,600 
48 meters, which is probably over 12,000 feet. I told you before a number, but you should calculate that at home. My hand is freezing, so I'll just show you some view, and then the rest I'll leave for you to see when you come here. This beautiful mountain is Everest right there in the middle. Really, really nice, really beautiful. You can see all around. That was my glove, but all around really, really, really pretty. Base camp is also down there. Soon you'll see some beautiful lakes. I'm telling you it's worth it, for sure worth it. Just walk up slow. You'll have no air and that's fine. It's part of the game, but it's so beautiful. I'm right now in one of the guest houses, so I don't want to speak too loud. I don't, don't want to wake anyone up. But just a sec before we talk about, you know, the route day to day, how it's going to work for you. I just want to give you a few reminders when, when you come here to Nepal, when you come to do the trek or the climbing, whatever it is. So, of course, you know, the regular stuff that you do before each flight, passport and all those things. Also, today with COVID, you might need some type of certificate. And it makes sure that you get if you want the vaccines you need for this area, because this area usually does require a few vaccines, maybe altitude pills and things like that. Now, that's all that before, you know, even getting on the flight, but in terms of what you want to pack. So let's start from the top to bottom. You'll probably want you know, something warm for your head. Uh, it is pretty cold over here, pretty chilly. And, you know, something uh, that also covers your ear pretty well and also something for the neck. Now, in terms of, you know, t-shirts, whatever, I recommend something long also because when it's sunny, you know, the sun is strong, can get burned. And also because it's pretty cold over here. So when you actually go and hike, you don't like to bring the minimal things that you need. Uh, even though you might get a porter, which you could, porter basically is a person that will carry all of your things. Uh, you go on a hike, you, you, don't, you really don't need too much things, you know, bring maybe two sets of t-shirts, two sets, and that's a lot, and two sets of long uh, shirts. Then a jacket, uh, if you have a down jacket, like from feathers, that would, would even be better. Of course, underwear, socks, all those things, two pairs of pants. Make sure you have good boots. So basically, I won't go through everything now. Most you could get here in Nepal, but good hiking boots and a good backpack. Make sure you bring before. The rest you could really, bring, you could really buy here, it's, it's all good. Uh, you should also, if you want, you know, have this, uh, it's a small device that checks your oxygen. Uh, there are different rules. Usually you're in 94, 3 plus. Over here it varies from the height. Of course, also sunglasses, sunscreen, like I said, I'm not going to go through the whole list now. But those are like the main things and most of the things you can buy here. Uh, you might also want to bring a book, you know, you finish the day early in the guest house, you have some free time. Of course, if you have any medical condition that requires any pills or something like that, for sure, bring that also. If you have any more specific questions you want to go down into details, feel free you know, to leave a comment and for sure I'll answer you. Now, I want to go, you know, dive deep a little bit into the days I'll show it to you on the map. And I'm, I'm telling you ahead of time, what I'm going to tell you is a rule of thumb. If you are already in altitude and you're acclimatized, you might not take those, you know, rest days and you'll just go by the days that I talk about in the video. If you're not acclimatized, you might want more acclimatization days because you want to stay safe and not get altitude sickness. So this is a rule of thumb. Of course, you can play with it, take it from here to there. But I'll show you everything right now on the map. Oh, I forgot just one thing. If you want to do the climbing of Island Peak or whatever it is, any summit you want to climb. If you're not a climber, you know, don't, you don't climb mountains as a hobby, Really no reason to buy that equipment. I love backpacking, I'm not a climber, so when I climbed in Summit Island Peak, I didn't buy any equipment. You could rent everything over here and return it. If you're a climber, that's a different story, but if not, really no reason to buy, you could rent everything here. Okay, so after you have got to Lukla, whether it's by a flight like we said, Jeep, whatever it is, this is Lukla right here. You can see Lukla, you start walking day number one. You walk, you walk, you walk in this route. Okay, now you can make a choice. Either you can stop here in Pakding, number one. Number other option is day number one, you finish here in Monjo. Right here, you can see it right here. Okay, now that's day number one. Day number two, you walk up to Namche Bazaar. That's right here, and when you get here day number two, you acclimatize here. I didn't say anything about the rest days, but you acclimatize in Namche Bazaar for another day 
and when you stay here for that day, you walk up to the Everest Viewpoint Hotel. It's a little bit hard to see it on the map, but it helps you to the acclimatization. That way you climb up, and then you come back down. So that's day three if you also count the acclimatization day. Day four, you continue on this route. And then some people will stop in Tangboche, right here. And some people will continue to Pangboche, okay? Again, you don't want to go, uh, in terms of sleeping, you don't want to sleep more than 500 meters in your last altitude. So right now, if we include the rest day, we are already right now at day number four. Let's say you got to Pangboche. Okay, day number five. You walk, you walk, again, you go on this route. And from here, it's a little bit hard to see, but you walk to Dingboche. Dingboche, okay, from here you also over here do an acclimatization day. And from Dingboche, on day number five, basically you, you walk up a mountain that is, I think, about 5,083. It's right here. Okay, you'll do over here another acclimatization day. After this acclimatization day in Dingboche, you start basically walking towards Lobuche, which is right up here, okay? Walking up here could be a little bit challenging, but you'll be fine. In Lobuche, usually you'll stay one night. Sometimes you need to order that ahead of time. After a night in Lobuche, you walk up to Goakshep, okay? From here, you have a few options. A lot of people go from here to Everest Base Camp, and then come back, go to sleep, and wake up, you know, a few hours before sunrise, and climb up over here to Karapa Tower. Beautiful view over here, really, really nice. Some people go over all the way to Everest Base Camp, and before going to sleep, they actually try to make it here for sunset. I think it's like two and a half hours, if I remember, climbing up. So it depends if you're fast enough or not. If not, just go to Base Camp, come back if you want to go to Base Camp, and then go to Kalapatar. The whole thing should take you between 8 to 13 days. Really depends on you. Also, the way back, you know, I didn't break it down because a lot of people walk back much faster, and some people also acclimatize faster, so they need less rest days. It really depends on you, but usually, you know, as a rule of thumb, I'll say eight to thirteen days, and just really, even if you don't go through these, you know, villages, there are so many along the way. Listen to your body, look at the beautiful view, understand how you feel, and decide from there. Well, I need to go to sleep. I have a Early morning rise. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me and I'll go down into details even more. Just one last thing. Hope you are going to have a great hike, but don't forget to just leave a few days at the end to enjoy, relax. I'm right now here in Polka, but you could go wherever you want and just have a few days of relaxation, massage, whatever it is. Enjoy, relax, and have an amazing time. Hi, I hope this video is serving you and you're enjoying it. I just want to remind you that my belief is that you are here to serve a purpose greater than yourself. But in order to do that the best way, you must start with investing in yourself. For us to help other people, please press that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget that the most amazing things in life are the one you take for granted.